Guys, welcome. Thanks for coming out. I'm John Galante. If we're going to give some evaluations to you guys, we're going to give some critiques. As long as you're open to them, if you're not open to them, it's fine. We'll move on to the next guy. But we want to help you guys get better, if nothing else. Introduce you to the organization. You know, hopefully we can work together. Seeing like the earth is mine, moving like I own this time. This guy can umpire. Guys, before we get too far into this, I know you guys have been umpiring a while. We're all fast, all right? We got a track ball all the way into the mitt, all right? We, we talk all the time about timing, but we've got to have natural timing. Natural timing is tracking the baseball all the way into the mitt, then deciding what the pitch is, and then rendering a decision. Think about how long that takes, all right? Track the pitch, decide in your head, render a decision. We're seeing guys right now, call pitches as they hit the mitt and we're going to miss pitches because of it we can't be as good as we can if we're not going to track good job good job Kurt, hold on one second guys come around the plate Tom stay there get down in your stance put it on low outside low outside corner don't move don't move What's the brand that it's called? What if the pitch is there? Well, what if it's a foul tip into the mitt? We're on the ground. All right, so my point is not to embarrass Tommy, right? It's we got to get up on the catcher so he's not obstructing our view anymore. So we've seen five guys, four of them have been too far behind the catcher. Get up so the catcher is no longer an obstruction for you. That doesn't mean we have, we're going to be in a spot to interfere, but the catcher's head and back can't be in our field of vision. We've got to be able to see the entire strike zone at the minimum. And that pitch is borderline strike. Bring it up a couple inches. I still don't think you can see it, along with some other guys. So get up there. Get your head height to the point where he's not obstructing you anymore. Okay? Hi. All right, Derek. Guys, one thing I'd like to see out of all of you for these strike threes, let's try to keep our head forward, right? We got all kinds of going on in front of us on a strike three. Um, interference, drop third strike, a whole bunch of stuff. Let's stay forward. That's a good example why we're going to keep our head forward, though. All right. What's your name again? Bob. Bob, let's come up for that strike. So get, boom, let's get as tall as we can. Okay. Ah, down. Well, I think you could find a spot for everyone. What the f is that? Don't. No. What? What you got to Um. I would tweak some, your timing is good. I would tweak, I think you take your head off the play too much. Okay. You know what I mean? Especially on strike three. Like that one, I think you could change your strike three, but just make it go with it. Boom, keep everything right in front of you. You know what I mean? Um, I think you're a little far behind the catcher, but not completely to the point. I mean, we could try that that exercise. If you can see his glove, and let's say if we put three fingers on his glove, you can tell me how many fingers I have when he gets to the out, outermost portion yeah, of the we'll zone. Try yep. just, just so we'll take a look at that. But obviously you've got some experience, so yeah. it's just tweaking, you know? Just tweaking, I can see it. I, just want to work at it. I hear you. What's your name, bro? Sean. Sean. Sean, let's not bring this foot up here like this. You're going to interfere with him. You know what I mean? He comes and turns, and you're bringing your foot up, right? Keep it where it's at and just, boom, pop it. I got it. Guys, look, this is our catcher. This is where our head cannot go beyond. That's it. Let's treat this like there's you're in a pool of water. Head's got to stay above his head height, all right? Because as soon as we dip below his head height, he becomes an obstruction again. So it's not only getting up to on him, but it's getting to this point and never getting below it, okay? And I'll tell you what, that's the top of the zone, nine times out of ten anyway, based on the batter. Right there at the top of his eyes, boom. Anything above it, we can rule out as a ball. So it'll help us, help us in multiple ways. Good job, that's up. Good job. Ball four. Hey, hey. 
Nice looking strike three. In yeah, instead of ball four, just grab it. Yep. It's too fast. Oh, four! Holy sh! Bill, regardless of where that pitch is, I wouldn't yell ball four so loud. You know what I mean? That almost sounds like strike. Yeah. At the louder we raise our voice, the less we can tell exactly what somebody's saying. So, ball. You know, ball four. Something for batter, catcher, maybe the pitcher. You know? But if he sees you don't come up like this and you stay down, right, he's going to get the message it's a ball. Yes, Mark. With this simple mindset of what the strike zone is, can you just crouch for me for a catcher? Like that. We talk about the framework of the catcher as establishing what our strike zone is, right? If you look, John shoulders when he's at the point of the plate, it's roughly the edges of the uh, of the plate. When that ball comes in and it hits him in the shoulder, it's a strike. You look at his knees and my knees. I'm eight and a half feet tall. He's not. His knee and my knee roughly line up the same. So if that pitch catches is at his knee or above within the framework of his shoulder it's got to be a strike it has to be my strike zone is my uh, the armpit to the hip halfway in between to the base of the knee if you look at his forehead that is roughly right where my the, the top edge of my strike zone is so if you we tell the guys all the time if you simply close your eyes and open them up when he catches the ball and where that ball is, you just go ahead and call a strike, you're going to go from 70 or 75% effective in terms of calling strikes to 85 to 90. Because you're not guessing what this ball is doing out here. But if we're calling the pitch out here, we're going to screw it up. We have to call the pitch when it's here. And the only way to do that is to allow it to travel, hit, tell yourself that's a strike, that's a strike, no shit, that's a ball, call the ball and stand up. Or that's a ball, that's a ball. Oh my God, look what it did. That's a strike and come up and call the strike. The timing is way fast. And I think if people just use the framework of the catcher as the reference points to the strike zone, the effectiveness is gonna go up. I wrote down only things that three or more of you do, okay? So anything specific to you, I, I talk to you specifically about it. Big things I've saw. Guys getting in the box, and this could go anytime. I don't understand this. We can debate the logic of it this hand up thing right don't we want to go 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 i think we should only be going let's put it in play so as soon as he's on the rubber i'm waiting 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 bang in play i don't want this he's on the rubber he looks up and sees an umpire like this and and then we got him we got to get him back on and we got to put it in play again this i don't know if you're protecting the batter or if you're protecting yourself but if you step behind that catcher you're ready to call a game and put it in play just one word go only green lights, no red lights, okay? If we've got to protect the batter and he's quick pitching, kill the whole thing. But the time we save by not keeping our hand up is gonna be a net positive for us. We don't wanna stop play. And if, God forbid, there's a pick off with our hand up like this, your partner's not gonna appreciate it either. So if I'm your base guy, I don't want this. I want that. Get it in play as soon as you can for me so I know when I have a pick off play, I can call it, all right? Just put it in play, all right? All right, I'll jump ahead. Uh, indicators. We got to get out of the indicators. We can't go. Hey, hey, right. Just click it while it, click it while it's down. Get used to that. Keep your head up. You look more confident. Nothing worse. You miss a pitch and then you bury your head in the indicator. It's not a good look. Even if you don't intend it to be passive and uh, non-confident, that's exactly the impression you're giving off. So let's keep head up. Stay out of the indicator, right? And let's get the baseball in play. And I agree with Kurt, but he covered it pretty well. All right. Balls down. Strikes up. All right, Brian, let's roll here. Wait! Yeah, that's my guy here. Hunt! There used to be a guy, there was a guy, it was in my cadet class with the called everything a strike. Everything was a strike. Like, pitches just almost bounced. Like and he would call it shredding sheets, right? Like, ripping sheets up. Like, yeah. And I'd be like, on the base, like, no, no. I was like, what the place would go nuts. The catcher would go like this. And just throw it around. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> Guys, while they're warming up, I have, I'll get to grab the last two things I had. Again, this was for more than two or three of you. Um, the count. We're giving the count way too high, way too far out. We should be in between our shoulders, right above the catcher's head. Right here. 
wherever that is for you, right in front of you, not here, not here, right there, right in front of you. Two, a lot of hammer guys in here. Hammer guys, you want to make your call look more athletic. Let's stop with the, huh, this, the, the softball, shit, right? Come in here, turn at the waist, bang, go grab it. All right, we can't move towards the catcher um, post pitch. We we're talking about getting up on the catcher so we can see, but don't artificially go towards him after the play. That's going to get us in a lot of trouble. So I love getting up on the catcher, but not after the pitch comes. All right, so go grab your strikes and look more athletic doing it. The point guys, drop your right leg, clear the catcher. So I'm all for getting up on the catcher, and then after we see it, let's get away from him, give him some room. So uh, point guys, right, st right foot back, fire it out, about shoulder level. Yeah, at the top of your strike call, your knees should not be bent. You're good? Boom. Let's get up tall for these strikes, all right? Get up tall for these strikes. Atta boy. Good job. Good job. No hand down. No hand. No hand. There we go. Green means go. Green means go. Oh, where is that? Guys, trust the catcher's reference points. He catches it at his nose. That fucking thing is a strike. All right, I know. I know. We got the ball travels and it's deeper than the plate. But man, use the catcher to your advantage. I think it's his hair low. Bro, your head's like that far too low. Yep. And you're a big dude too, so you don't need to do it. Straight up. Straight out. <laughs> Good. Good job. That's it right there. His head height was a hair low. Okay. Is that all right with you, sir? Yeah, that's fine. That's all right. Fine. I, I, I noticed it. I just too. want to clear it with you. It wasn't always though. It was just once in a while he would go. But he's so low. he's so big he's that it looked really even it looked even guy. more exaggerated. Yeah, he was bigger than Kurt. He'd f Kurt up too. Oh yeah, Kurt well, wouldn't that's last because 10 he's minutes. something that Kurt's not. It's called athletic. <laughs> 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 this is just a roast over here. <laughs> I saw him walk up. I saw him put the uniform on. I know. He looked the best in uniform. Yeah. It's funny how that translates. Yeah. All right, guys, just a brief rundown of how this is going to go. It's pretty simple once we get started, but since we don't have kids to run, we split the group in half. We split the group in half. Half are umpires, half are runners. Once you run, you're an umpire. Once you umpire, you're a runner. You don't have to sprint. You don't even have to jog. Just come down the line. We'll time it up as close as we want the play to be. We have a first baseman. We have a shortstop. All right, I don't... These are supposed to be evaluations. We end up teaching more than we evaluate. That's fine, but I want to see you guys to go the first time through. Focus on your timing, slow down, use natural timing, keep your eyes on the first baseman as he comes off the bag, get some voluntary release. If none of that stuff is uh, sounding familiar to you, uh, we'll teach it as we go. Wow. Safe. Gary, ground ball to the shortstop. We're here, all right? That's like an old mechanic to go so far inside. Mm -hmm. New mechanic, we're real shallow with this angle. We're right here, we're here for pulled foot. All right, God forbid you get a pulled foot from over there, you're gonna be in a tough spot. Okay. All right, so stay here, you got Can swipe tag. Again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So it's, now we don't have to run anymore, it's two steps. Okay. You know what I mean? Two steps off the line. Real shallow, guys. We're not going all the way inside the diamond. Stop, stop. All right, next guy. We're staring down the bag, okay, and we're not watching the release from the shortstop, okay? We can't just stare this thing down. The ball's going to come in like a blur, and the whole thing's going to blow up on you. So, give me one. I'm, I'm going to go from A position for you guys. All right. So, real shallow too. We got guys going way too far. All right. Going here, boom. I'm done. I'm set, but I'm here, here, bag. Right. He's out. Baseball. He's out. Right. Eyes got to go from bag. When you register an out in your head, got to go to the baseball. Right, we got to get voluntary release. All right, you don't have an out until then, so it's not out at the bag anymore. That's old school. All right, bag, we have an out. First baseman comes off with the baseball. We should see your head clearly come from the bag to the ball, and then bang. No ball, no ball. Gary, how many people do you think need you to tell them there's no ball? Atta boy, good job. Freshman step would be real good, right? Great call. Let's even if it's post play, it's just that'll sell it. You know what I mean? They're gonna want to see that. As soon as the play changes from a normal out safe, coach are gonna want to see you adjust to that play, even if it's after it happened. You know what I mean? You see it and then boop, yep. No time! No time! 
Okay, you're selling something. I don't know if I'm buying it, but you're selling it. <laughs> All right. I thought he held. <laughs> Sean, try to be more. I'm trying to think of a word. Less reactionary. See the call. Yeah. Think about your arms. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They're going. You're, you sell the s at them, which is good. There. But you're not looking as crisp as you could. Out and back in. Set up. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get some video for you. I'm flying? Yes. Okay. Good call. Good job. Good job. Don't stare the bag down. You got it right. Let's move on. There's no baseball, right? That's primary. Okay, so nothing. Should have waited yet. Yep. Wait for that voluntary release. Good call. Stay on these calls longer, John. All right? Save it. Give it that time and then grab it off the back. Good call though. Stop, stop. Save. Valuable lesson guys. Nick, do it again. Right? If you got a first baseman who swipes a tag, what'd he tell everybody? No tag, no he, tag. he told him he's off, he told everybody, I'm off the bag. That's why he's swiping, right? So off the bag isn't the call anymore. What's the call? No tag, no tag. tag, no tag, one or the other. Too fast. Too fast. I'd like to see you get to a set position too. Okay. Right? You got good natural instincts. So it's that's helping you. Focus on your timing and get somewhere. My timing was fast until I started to anchor myself to something. And it, it happened to be my left leg. So what I do is I'll grab here. That's basically me telling my don't move. Right. right? Get that play in your head and then bang. On the tag, on the tag. Good job. John, one more thing for you. I got him, John. Yes, that point, see that left-handed point? I kind of like it. The problem is you're using it too often. Okay. You know what I mean? So think of that left-handed point as mean you're telling me something right when that left hand comes out. It's like bullets in a gun. You don't want to use them up if you don't need them. So that one, you could have done it, but it's going to be he held, right? Give something with the left hand. If it's just routine, right, he stays on the bag, routine play, ball beats him by a foot, right? There's no point in there. Don't use it. Don't waste it. Good call. Anybody got a whacker in this building? I know, I'm waiting. He's safe though. Beat that. Yep, there it is. Head up. Guys, look at this. Real quick, right? Common problem again. This is almost everybody. Soon as we go to this punch out, our head goes right down into the ground and we can't have it. Right? Head up. Boom! Up on the baseball. Stay up. Don't bury your head. You got a whole lot of stuff happening here. Voluntary release, transfers, all kinds of stuff. Especially when we get into the middle of the diamond. That's the sad part. He also <laughs> Ah. Off the bag. Save. Bill, you're moving as that ball's arriving. So let's get set. He throws, boom, head right to the bag. Stay set, and if something happens post play, we can move. All right? Save. Off the bag. Derek, let's go this way on that one. Right? We can see it, and then we can wave him this way. Why? All right, let's say tag first, left hand, then grab the out. I think, oh, I was certain. I think we should stick with safe. He's safe. Okay. Right. This way we, we get it, boom, get it out. Something else I gotta change. <laughs> <laughs> Safe! We got a bunch of safe calls in the building today. It's shoulder level. Leave it there a second. Get some camera time at least and bring them back. Other hand. Information out. 
What are we doing wrong as a group? Remove yourself from it. What are you seeing other guys do wrong as a group? Time. Time. Timing is poor. What else? We're not using our eyes properly. Okay? It's a little bit more difficult than plate work with our eyes. We got to go from the bag and these whackers, I get it. The adrenaline comes up. We want to really go get this thing, but we have to take our eyes from the bag once the play happens. The ball beat the runner. You have that in your head. Your eyes go to the glove hand so we don't get embarrassed with a ball laying on the ground and us going full-blown Hollywood mode. All right, that's embarrassing. All right, egregious errors are, are going to get us in trouble at our level of play. It's not the MLB. The egregious shit is where we get in trouble. See the glove, see body control, firm and secure possession, or voluntary release of the baseball. Then unleash and go get it. But you can't do it before that. You're going to get yourself in trouble. It's not a matter of if you are, it's just when. When is this going to bite you on the field? Because if you call outs prematurely, a ball is going to come out on you, or you might not even see it come out, and he might pick it up again, and you got a coach on you telling you a ball was down, and you don't even know it. It happens. If we, don't, if we bury our head and we call outs too soon, those are the problems that are going to happen. Jerry, what did you say? Yeah, the same thing. Time, timing is, is just way too quick, and I think we're making up our mind before it happens because we're trying to figure in our head, how am I going to make this call? He's safe, so I'm going to do, and it's already in your mind, and you're, and you're going to miss it. I don't think we missed a whole lot. No, I thought the accuracy of the calls were yeah. good. It just, and everybody did the same exact thing. And I mean, I've even seen Major League umpires do it. Yep, that's an out. Yep, staring down the bag, staring down the bag. Ball's over there, right? I've seen Major League umpires do it. We have to be better than that. We have to stay with the baseball. Even if it means that out is pulled over here, but it happened over there, it doesn't matter. Where is the baseball? Always is where we go. That's good. See, if something bad can happen if we don't. It's harder for us. We're working in two-man crews 90% of the time, right? So if I stay on this and stare down the bag as a first base umpire, you one out of four, they got everything else that happens on the field. If I'm in C coming across and I stay on this bag, the ball is going to come right back across your eyes and be at third base, and we're screwed. So we're working A right now. It's important so we don't miss something egregiously here. But when we get in the middle of the diamond and a secondary play happens, if you keep staring down this bag, there's going to be another play happen that you're not reacting to. And so that's your play. They're all yours. This is, you know, 101 two-man mechanics. All plays on the infield are yours. It's not softball where the plate guy comes up to third. We don't do that in baseball. That's our play at third. We have to be moving in that direction. All right, so let's try to fix. Disregard what he said. Never mind. No, ain't nobody old enough to remember that. Let's try to fix those few things, and we're going to be ahead of the game moving forward. So let's let's split us in half again and start again. Use your eyes properly. Good job. Good job. He held, he held. What the hell? <laughs> I'm starting to think that's in your repertoire. That's in your, that's in your toolbox. Do you? <laughs> we gotta whack that one, bro. Real natural timing is tracking the baseball out of his hand, then go to the bag. Once we have an out, our eyes go from bag to baseball. Okay, that's real timing. So if you do that before you call out, your timing can't be too quick. It's impossible to have catch, come off, take it out, and now your out's coming out. That is proper timing every single play. So check those boxes, and we're not going to have a timing issue. Before you call an out, find the ball. Okay, go. we're going to glance over there sometime, and the ball's going to be laying on the ground, and you're going to say, thank God, I didn't make myself look like an idiot. Real easy, safe call now. I just wanted to say, with this group, I was really impressed with the, uh, we've, this is our third one of these, I was really impressed with the uh, openness to the constructive criticism. I know it's a pain in the ass. Everybody comes in here, everybody's going to tell you how great you are, but we don't do that with anybody. There's something wrong. And if we jumped in line with you guys, there'd be critiques for us as well. So I was very impressed with the openness to what we had for you, and hopefully you got something out of it. Um, Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate you guys being here. But um, hopefully you guys want to work PG with us and uh, the rest of the stuff for you guys from Pizzino, uh will be handling that stuff too. But to me, to me, the golden goose of it all is PG. I mean, it's just it, to me, it's the best tournament experience um, you can get. Now it's right in your guys' backyard. So 
Um, thanks for coming. Nice to meet all you guys.